Hey guys, welcome back to Ostrich Investing, where our goal is to educate and debate specific stock investment ideas. It's been a while and wow, we have had some crazy, crazy markets. Uh, we've got the coronavirus, we've also got the upcoming US election, and the the markets have just been, been giving us a ton of volatility, and uh, I know it's been a while since I posted a video, but rest assured, I've been... I've been researching a lot of names and, and running through it. It's, uh, maybe I'm a bit of a masochist, but when the markets go down, I, I kind of get a little bit excited. Um, and so I wanted to come back uh, with another video today. And, and today, uh, we're going to take a look at a lesser known Canadian company called TerraVest Industries. And we'll just jump into it here. So TerraVest Industries is a diversified small cap manufacturing company. It trades on the TSX. Who cares? Uh, well, TerraVest is a successful roll-up story. They've made five acquisitions over the last three years, and that's really helped drive strong earnings growth. Insiders are aligned. Uh, the company's got a $300 million, roughly a $300 million market cap, with 50% held by Clark, as well as other insiders. And Clark Inc. is also a publicly, rated, uh, publicly traded company uh, spearheaded by George Armoyan. So it's it's underfollowed. There's really no investor relations or company presentation. You, they file their, their annual disclosures, their annual financial statements, and an MD&A, and that's pretty much what you get. Um, and I think the third point is Clark just announced its intention to dividend uh, TerraVest out to its shareholders, which will increase the float. So right now, Clark owns about 32%. Of TerraVest, and at the end of March, uh, those shares will then end up in the hands of Clark shareholders, who may uh, decide to hold or or sell those shares in the market. And the company trades at 14 and a half times earnings, with a two plus percent dividend yield. So this video is going to take a look at TerraVest and see if it represents an attractive opportunity for investors. And it's going to include key considerations for for investors as well as bull, base, and bear case scenarios. So let's jump into it. Here we go. So TerraVest is a diversified industrial company. It operates in three segments. First, uh, fuel containment. And I'm going to be the first to admit I'm, I'm not an expert at any of the industries that, uh, that TerraVest operates into. But think about it, liquid pro propane, transport trailers, storage tanks. So you can sort of see that, that here, a truck that needs to carry that liquid propane. Uh, they also do residential tanks, uh, commercial storage tanks. They've got a second division that does processing equipment. So think of wellhead processing equipment for oil and gas companies. They've also got wellhead desanding units. They've got bulk ammonia and compressed gas transport trailers uh, used it in, a, in several industries. So think the most industrial of industrial names. Uh, there's definitely a, a reliance on uh, an end market being the oil and gas industry, particularly in Canada. And then the third, uh, the third segment, which is much smaller, is energy service, where they've got 21 service rigs that are operating largely in Saskatchewan. So here we go. Here's the share price performance over the last five years, and it's quite nice. Um, 185% share price appreciation over five years. Currently trades at about eight and a half times enterprise value to EBITDA based on their 2019 results. So if we look here, in January of 18, they had the they announced the agreement to buy Maxfield, which is one of their acquisitions for $21 million. Followed shortly thereafter uh, by a substantial issuer bid for almost $20 million between um, common shares as well as converts that they bought back. Uh, so management was fairly bullish heading into 2018, believed that their shares trading around $10 at the time were, were undervalued. And I guess the, the market and uh, their results have proven them correct over time. February 2019, Georgia Moyen, uh, again from Clark, was appointed to the board. Clark's investment, I believe, goes back much further than this, but that's when George was appointed to the board. And then in December 2019, just recently, the company released uh, pretty strong Q4 and full year results, and you can see the stock price sort of taken off since then. Uh, $12.50 a share back in early December, and it's sort of 
run up since then and trading just over $17. So really interesting <clears throat> for an underfollowed company, a little bit off the radar and, and uh, through all of the market turmoil and the coronavirus scare, uh, TerraVest has actually been on quite a run. Um, so this would have been a nice company uh, to have in your portfolio over the last few weeks and at least have one or two names that are going in the right direction. Okay, so we're going to talk about a couple key issues and then we'll, we'll get back to key considerations. Uh, financials is the first one that I wanted to talk about. Again, um, TerraVest doesn't have a, a long sort of five-year historical chart. They just hit you with their, their annual results. And so this is pulled from their filings. Um, and the first thing I want to point out is their sales growth. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can see revenue up from about 270 million in 2018 to 306 million. Nice growth, um, but if you read the MDNA management says the sales growth's really been driven by acquisitions. And if you back out the two acquisitions that they had made, uh, there's really zero percent organic growth. Um, so our acquisitions are driving the growth. And then the other point that I wanted to make. Uh, the share buybacks, the normal course issuer bid, as well as some of the convert buybacks have really helped to reduce shares outstanding. So if you look here, diluted shares outstanding of 20.6, dropping down to 19.1. And so a combination of, of uh, <clears throat> higher revenue, driving higher net income, and then a reduced share count is really what gets you that torque on the earnings per share. So earnings per share went up from $0.89 cents to $1.24 uh, year over year. Let's talk a little bit about the three segments now. Um, and I actually, I was intrigued by this one, so I went ahead and, and did a little modeling in Excel. So you get to see a snip, snip of that. Um, the three divisions, fuel containment, processing equipment, and energy services, you can see pretty quickly here that energy services is, is small. So it, not only is it small from a revenue perspective, when you actually look at net income, it, it's, it's really immaterial here. In fact, it posted a small loss in 2019. <clears throat> the other point that I want to make, and just as we think about the business and its, and its um, tie-in or potential exposure to the oil and gas industry, I think the processing equipment segment you can see here in 2016 which we know was a tough one for uh, the oil and gas sector <clears throat> net income was almost zero for this division it's bounced back back really nicely and of course these numbers are going to benefit from any acquisitions that the company's made but you can kind of see the story here 9.1 million in net profit for processing equipment in 2015 dropped down to almost zero and it's kind of built back up nicely um and I think, what else did I want to say here? Uh, not much, really. I mean, you can see fuel containment, processing equipment are the bulk of the revenue and also the bulk of the profits. Next, just wanted to talk briefly about the management. The chairman, uh, who's Charles Pellerin, he, uh, he sold his business uh, to TerraVest um, and, and retains 17% uh, of TerraVest shares. The former CF CEO owns about 10% and Clark Inc. owns 32%. And again, that's gonna be dividended out at the end of March. So there's good insider ownership here. Uh, I also believe based on the company's track record that they've got a, a, strong, a strong management team. Dustin Haw, who's the president and CEO, he, um, he joined TerraVest as a director in 2014 and then was appointed as president and CEO in 2017. And his, his background, he came from Clark Inc., again, George Armoyan, um, where I think he was doing corporate development and investments for them. Uh, so that's Dustin's background. And then Mitchell Gilbert came in as uh, uh, chief investment officer in 2013. And before that had 14 years of M&A experience uh, with an investment bank in Canada. So again, the, they've got a, a seasoned team that's experienced with making acquisitions and it, and it sort of shows in the results. Okay, uh, distributable cash is one financial metric the company uses that I wanted to point out. So if you go through their MDNA, they uh, 
they talk about cash available for distribution. And this is sort of a throwback to the income trust era where distributable cash includes an assumption for maintenance capex. And you can see here in 2019, they've said that their maintenance capital expenditures were four and a half million. And so if you look cash flow from operating activities, uh, change in non-cash working capital, deduct your maintenance capex, that gets you your cash available for distribution. I just wanted to point out uh, quickly, if you jump into the cash flow statement, that um, maintenance capex isn't isn't the full picture. And you can see here that uh, purchase of property, plant, and equipment was actually 17 million in 2019. So uh, management saying that 12 of that was capex that's intended for growth. Uh, they've also spent $10 million on acquisitions. And again, there's not a, a right or wrong number or ratio to look at here, but I wanted to give you the, the full picture. This is not uh, equal to the company's free cash flow generation. They're out um, spending money on acquisitions and their CapEx spend is meaningfully larger than the maintenance CapEx that they, that they show in that calc. Oh, one out of there we go. Uh, I should have clicked and you could have seen the red boxes. Uh, and then lastly, the outlook. Uh, one thing the company does give in its MDNA is a quick outlook. And here you can see the first thing that, that uh, after they reported their 2019 results, uh, management does expect the results for 2020 to be stronger than the prior year. Uh, and going back a few years, this little outlook paragraph, they've, they've more or less been right. So. As an investor, that's one cue to take. Secondly, um, they do talk about the Western Canadian energy market continuing to be challenged and management is not anticipating a reversal for fiscal 2020. So you can see here, there's the push and the pull. Um, there's there's weakness in, in the energy market, no surprise to any of us. Um, and the question what impact that's gonna have on their business. So key considerations for shareholders' strengths. I think we've got a really strong management team here. At least they've, they've proven that out over the last few years and executed well. There's insider ownership, uh, which is always nice to see. There's proven successful acquisition strategy. Again, they've made sort of five acquisitions in the last three years. They don't give a ton of details or financial breakout, but it, you know the proof's in the pudding in terms of the numbers that they put up. Uh, and again, you'd kind of see that here as well. Attractive return on capital employed, 17%, um, which I think is, is, uh, is, pretty, is pretty strong in an industry like this. So I think management's taking a disciplined approach to the acquisitions they make, the purchase price, the strategic merit, et cetera, et cetera. And then you've got some diversification in your business lines. Um, that helps as well. On the risk side, there's some oil and gas exposure here. Um, <clears throat> and I think from an organic growth perspective, that's the question is how, how excited are you about uh, organic growth opportunities? Company does have some unionized employees, uh, 230 out of 900. And of course, input, input costs, there's a lot of steel that goes into their tanks and, and, uh, and products that obviously as that rises, uh, could be a headwind for them. Key drivers, uh, really it's accretive acquisitions. Can they continue to find and execute uh, acquisitions at attractive uh, purchase prices? Organic growth, and we'll talk about that in our scenarios. And end markets being oil and gas and, and the health of those industries that they sell into. So here's our illustrative scenarios, the bull, the base and the bear case scenarios. Uh, and are very subtle, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you like the video, share with a friend. And uh, if you don't like the video, uh, sh share it with an enemy. That'll really get them. But either way, share the video. Uh, here we go. Bull case. And, and I kept this really simple. I don't think there's really any need to overcomplicate the story, uh, but interested in your feedback uh, in the comments below. So bull case, basically some organic growth plus acquisitions and, and anytime you can layer in a roll-up strategy with organic growth, it's a really powerful formula. Um, put an 18 times multiple on $1.65 of VPS and that gets us to a share price of almost $30 a share, which is you know 75% percent 
higher than the stock price today, and the stock price has already had a, a pretty decent run. Base case, um, in, in this case, we're, we're saying the base business is flat, uh, which is kind of what it was last year, um, but they're able to roll in acquisitions as they have in the past. And in this case, we're sort of getting a 15 times multiple, which is roughly where it trades today, a little bit of a bump, um, and a $1.50 EPS with the growth that they're going to generate from these acquisitions. That's going to get you to a $22.50 uh, share price, which is up 32% um, from today's close. And of course, you also get that 2% plus dividend while you wait. And lastly, the bear case is really take it one step further. If, if the, the base businesses turn negative from an organic growth perspective, um, then that's partially offset by growth from acquisitions, but you blend it together, it's not nearly as attractive. Uh, earnings per share could, could fall uh, slightly, and we've got the multiple would come, come off in that case. So I've got it at 11 times and twenty EPS, which implies a share price of $13.20. And of course, you still get the dividend, but just on a share price perspective, that is <clears throat> down 23% from today's close. Okay, so in conclusion, I think TerraVest, it's been a great under-the-radar story in Canada over the last five years. Share price is up 185%. Strong management, well-executed acquisition strategies, driven growth without dilution. Clark is dividing, dividending out its 30% stake, that should be a positive, increases the float while insiders, including the CEO, <clears throat> excuse me, may maintain meaningful ownership. And moving forward, I think one of the key questions for investors is really whether the company can drive organic growth in the face of potential industry headwinds, oil and gas, or will its growth come solely from acquisitions? Uh, that's it for today's video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll be back soon with more content. But until then, happy investing and don't bury your head in the sand.